everybody welcome back to Jessica's reading room my name is Kim and we are here with the April 2021 monthly wrap up video basically this is what Kim read in the month of April birthday month for a bunch of us here at Jessica's reading room Woohoo! and yes I had some very good books this month and considering that I did some traveling and some distractions for my birthday I read nine books that's pretty good that's, that's pretty good. So I'm happy with it. And these and some of these were like intellectual books too. So I'm good with that, you know? Okay. All right. So we're just gonna get right into it. What Kim read in April. Okay, first, we have Bitter Chills, a horror anthology edited by Nick Harper. <gasps> this one was really good. I mean, and what's nice about it, because I mean, it had the central theme of like cold and winter. But yet not all of these were actually like horror. There were some that were horror. Then there were some that were like almost sci-fi. Then there were some that were more thriller. So it was this nice diverse amalgam of stories in this anthology. And I really liked it. I thought it was really good. I found this on Instagram. And yeah, this is one where if you're like, you don't like horror, but you kind of sort of like creepy, this is a good one to read. So there you go. There it is. All right, next we have The Redwood Asylum by L.A. Detweiler. Now this one is actually, I guess, I guess it's technically a part of the um, Christmas Bell series that I read last month, but I think it's a little bit more of like a standalone. Um, I don't think you need to have read The Christmas Bell in order to get this book. So that's just me. I mean, there's like a tiny reference, but it's not anything too bad. Um, basically, this nurse comes to work at Redwood Asylum. Uh, she gets there and things start looking sketchy. She starts learning things and then I can't tell you the rest because that gives it all away. Um, I liked this book. Was I blown away with this book? Not necessarily, but I liked it. I mean, it was, it was an interesting story. Um, I mean, there are some pretty scary stuff. There's, there's scary stuff in it. So, I mean, it's a good horror. I, is it my favorite? No, but I enjoyed it. I liked it. I'm glad I'm, I'm, oh my gosh, I can't talk. I'm glad I read it. And I love this cover. This cover is like super creepy. You guys know I love a creepy cover. Boom. Okay, next. Ooh, this one, I'm so proud of myself for this one, you guys. All of a sudden, I've turned into like a mature person. Okay, not really, because I've actually been really obsessive in the last, like, two months. But, I mean, just the fact that I read a nonfiction book, like a full-on history book, too. All right, Chernobyl, History of a Tragedy by this guy. See that? I don't know how to say his name. He's Ukrainian. So, in order to not offend the nation of Ukraine, I'm not going to try and say it. So... Hi, Ukraine. Love you. Okay. Um, you guys know, I've been on a Chernobyl kick lately. It was that stupid fallout book that got me freaked out about radiation. And then I read Voices from Chernobyl. Then I watched the HBO Max show, which blew my mind. Then I decided to sit down and read this book, which I'm really mad at because actually it shows that the HBO Max uh, uh, TV series is actually really inaccurate. And it so sad because I loved that show. <laughs> um, but I really liked it. I mean, I considering the fact that if I read nonfiction, it's like, okay, read a little bit, go read a book, you know, read a little bit, go read a fiction book, you know, and that's, that's kind of how I did this. And yet I still finished it. And those bits that I read between all the fiction books, yeah, they were really big chunks. So, I'm, again, I'm really proud of myself. I'm doing pretty well this month. Like, my maturity has gone up just a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. So, if you want to learn more about Chernobyl, there is a bit science. Like, this is a bit on the technical side. But, I mean, I understood most of it. So, that, you know, you know? You know, okay. When you know, you know. Okay, this one. Here's another one. This one, I was on the philosophical side. This is my first ever Ray Bradbury book, and it's The Martian Chronicles. I found this at an antique store, because, I mean, there are some Ray Bradbury books that I was like, of course I need to read. 
I mean, I haven't read for uh, Fahrenheit 451 yet, which I'm really annoyed at myself for that because it sounds like something I would really like. Um, but I found this in an antique store, so I grabbed it and I read it on the flight from Valdosta when I took Ivan down to go to work. I flew from Valdosta to Atlanta, Atlanta to Jacksonville, and I was reading this the whole time and holy cow. Like, I mean, I, it, who, if all his other works are like this, then holy crap. Bradbury gets humanity, okay? He gets humanity, he gets governments, he gets, he gets it. So I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was awesome. I mean, I, I even have, Ivan wants to read this book now. So if you haven't read Martian Chronicles, I mean, you're going to end up sitting and like pondering it a lot and that's it's really good I liked it I thought it was really really good oh and look <laughs> here's here's the stars we steal by Alexa Dunn oh my goodness and, and just it was just so awful okay all right this is this is Becky's fault okay Becky over at bookies who guilted me into a read-along with her and she picked this book and holy cow. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. I can't say that it was necessarily a bad book. It was just a very tropey YA book. Okay. So if you love all those YA tropes, then you can read this and you'll probably love it. Okay. I'm over all of those. So I didn't love it. It's basically the selection in space where if there had been aliens, I probably would have liked it better. Like if the Vulcans had randomly shown up, oh, if the Klingons had shown up, I would have been like, best book ever. But no, there, there weren't any Klingons, there weren't any Vulcans, there weren't any Martians. Somehow humanity ends up like circling Earth, orbiting Earth in spaceships because the Earth is frozen. Nobody tells us why. I mean, if there was a nuclear holocaust, I mean, at least then I would have been interested. Now I'm just not even interested. I'm like, oh, the world froze? Oh, oh no. Stupid global warming. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just salty about it because it was not great. And Becky made me do it. She hasn't even, she doesn't even seem very contrite about it either. Like she's, I even picked out the, cause I'm going to guilt her into a read, or a, a read along. And I even have a book all picked out and she's being all elusive about it. Well, I can't buy that book. I have to read 17 more books. I'm watching you, Becky. I'm watching you. Okay. All right. Next. Now this one, oh, this one was really good. Okay. It's Naomi's Room, the Spine Chilling Classic by Jonathan Acliff. And this is a lovely cover too. Oh my gosh. This one, this one gave me nightmares. I don't normally get nightmares in horror books. Okay. I, I, I don't. All right. I'm actually, okay. I'm going to like move stuff so I can sit comfortably and not look so weird in the camera. Um, normally if I read a horror book, I'm, I'm pretty chill about it. I'm like, okay, no problem. Creepy, but that's okay. Everything's fine. Worst thing that happens is I sleep with the bathroom light on. Okay. That's like absolute worst. Yeah. Not with this book. No, this book, I all of a sudden have this crazy dream that I move into this old house that's apparently haunted and I look in and there are toys moving all by themselves because there are the spirits of dead children and in my dream I go like full-on hysterical and I wake up and I'm laying there and I'm like the fudge just happened you know what I'm talking about but this one I mean it was really good I read it I mean I, that was only after a quarter of the book that was because I read it in like two sittings. It took me less than 24 hours. I had legit only read a quarter and I it gave me nightmares. I mean, it was really good. And this was written in like 1991 too. So 
and I hadn't ever heard of it. So if you're a horror fan and you haven't read Naomi's Room, you need to because it's freaking brilliant. Okay, next. Oh, <laughs> look, another horror book. <laughs> okay, The Seance in Apartment 10 by Ambrose Isbin. Okay, this one I got for my birthday. Thank you, Yami. And this one was another one. I didn't have nightmares. But I was laying in the bedroom waiting for Ivan to come to bed because he was out gaming. And I was like, I texted him and I said, okay, you need to come to bed. He's like, well, I'm not done. I said, I don't, okay, I don't care. Because I got to a really scary part and I was freaked out and I didn't want to be in there all by myself. And again, that doesn't happen all the time either. So that was, that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. I mean, that's when you move into a creepy apartment. The building is like... It's one of those things that's in perpetual, you know, gray, cloudy, even if the sun is shining. A Ouija board is taken out. Stuff starts happening. And there are some creepy ass stuff in this book. And I thought it was really good. And plus this cover. It might be the most gorgeous cover tournament, but I don't know. Because you guys don't really like the horror covers. So I don't know. All right, next we have The Vines by Shelley Nolden. Now this one, this one shouldn't surprise you like at all. I mean, it's got North Brother Island in New York City. Used to be, you know, the site of a tuberculosis hospital. It was a psychiatric hospital for a little while. I mean, again, that shouldn't surprise you at all. And Jessica gave me a gift card for my birthday. And so I bought this book. And yeah. And what's really sad about it is that I didn't really like it like I haven't written the review on it yet because I'm still pondering it so I don't want to say too much but it just it was disappointing you know it was just it I was now I kind of want to go to North Brother Island and go look at the ruins but this book just it disappointed me just so sad because I didn't want it to but it just did so I'll tell you about it in my review so just so hang in there and I'll get that eventually okay all right then this one totally random buy on my part I will admit it I've seen obviously this has been out for forever it's by one of like my all-time favorite authors Grady Hendrix it's been all over Instagram and I'm only just now reading it which sucks but I'm so glad I did. Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. Oh my gosh. Okay, I cannot even say enough good about this book. All right, I can't. I legit packed up my stuff and I went to go sit at Denny's. Okay, which our Denny's on like a, I don't even know what day it was. It was open until one o'clock. And so I was like, okay, I got there at like 8.30ish. And I was like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read this book and I'm going to finish it. And I did. I finished it and it was, I can't, I, it, <sighs> again, I haven't, oh, I did write a review on this one. Okay, so I did turn in a review. It just hasn't been posted yet. But this book, I swear, it's brilliant in every way. And it's actually, he describes it. In here, it is a work of fiction, horror, and parody. So yet, while I'm totally freaked out by this story, there are illustrations that just cracked me up. I mean, and somehow I made it through this book where I was both terrified and amused at the same time. It was brilliant. Brilliant. Okay? And I mean, I just... I. I've loved every other thing that Grady Hendrix has written. The fact that it took me this long to pick this up makes me kind of mad at myself, but holy crap. Brilliant. And I don't even, I don't even want to describe it to you because then it would ruin it. Just, just pick it up and read it. And this is one of those books where it's best if you just pick it up and randomly start reading it and you'll see what I mean. Cause it's brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Okay, so, oh boy, we have best and, and worst, right? Okay, worst is not hard. Thanks, Becky. Thanks a lot. Thanks for that. You're, you're a great friend. You're a great book friend, Becky. You know that? Okay, and I thought I had decided my most favorite, 
but I think I changed my mind and I think I'm gonna say that Horror Store is my most favorite my best of the month it's brilliant that's all I can say that's all I can say is that it's brilliant and you should read it this one you don't have to read unless you're unless you love trophy YA then you can read this but this one everybody has to read because it's brilliant okay all right so there we go what Kim read in the month of April 2021. I would love, love, love to hear what you have read this month. Make sure you tell me down in the comments if you have any suggestions to improve the channel, to improve the blog. Please tell us down in the comments. And if you have any book suggestions or recommendations, preferably horror. And I love hospitals. Put it down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you guys. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next month. Hope everybody has an awesome May. Bye.